I'm Dr. Bob McGrew from Cornerstone Family Medical Group in Modesto. This video segment on the Prevnar pneumococcal conjugate vaccine is part of a series of videos giving information on commonly recommended immunizations. This video is intended to supply general information. For specific decisions about your health, you should always talk with your personal doctor. In the U.S., Vaccines have reduced the frequency of many infectious diseases that once routinely killed or harmed lots of infants, children, and adults. An excellent example of this is the greatly reduced number of infants and children who've gotten infections around the brain and in the bloodstream from pneumococcal bacteria. Those kinds of infection are called invasive pneumococcal infections. The Prevnar type of pneumococcal vaccination primarily prevents that kind of infection. Given that you may never have heard of this disease, it's fair to ask, should I have my child vaccinated? And do I or any loved ones also need this vaccine? It helps to understand more about this disease. Prior to the widespread use of the Prevnar vaccination, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine is the other name for this, Every year in the U.S., the pneumococcal germ caused about 700 cases of infection that affected the lining of children's brains, which is called meningitis. That causes the lining and the underlying brain tissue to be red and swollen, as this picture shows. It is of the brain of a person who died of pneumococcal brain infection. This germ also caused about 13,000 cases of bloodstream infections called sepsis that were life-threatening. This often affected babies and toddlers, where the diagnosis could be hard to make initially. Even worse, both the brain and bloodstream infections are so aggressive that the child may die or have some type of permanent brain damage, such as hearing loss, before antibiotics have a time to work. In this picture, a child with pneumococcal disease has a facial rash caused by inflamed blood vessels. All of the kids with these types of infections needed hospitalization, and about 200 of them died every year before vaccines came into widespread use around the year 2000. The germ also caused 5 million cases every year of middle ear infections and many cases of pneumonia not associated with bloodstream infections. Now, anyone can get pneumococcal disease, but some people are at greater risk than others. These include kids younger than two years old, young children in group childcare, as many children are, kids with certain chronic diseases such as heart and lung problems, and some ethnic groups such as Native Americans and African American kids. These germs are spread from person to person by direct contact with saliva or mucus, such as kissing, sharing cups and utensils, and coughing. Since kids do those things a lot, it's hard to prevent the disease without getting vaccinated. Have the vaccines against pneumococcal infection worked? The good news is yes. Life-threatening infections among children less than five years old decrease from about 100 cases per 100,000 kids each year to 21 cases per 100,000 kids in 2008, about eight years after the Prevnar vaccine went into widespread use. A different study on infants in California showed that an early form of Prevnar vaccine protected 96% of healthy children against life-threatening pneumococcal disease. It also reduced ear infections by 7% and reduced episodes of pneumonia. These studies are very good news and provide excellent reasons to make sure your loved ones are vaccinated against this deadly bacterial germ. Now I'll tell you more about the vaccination. The Prevnar vaccine is more specifically called the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine and is abbreviated as PCV13. It protects against the 13 subtypes of the pneumococcal bacteria that are most likely to cause life-threatening disease. It is given as a small shot and is recommended to be given as a series of four doses, with one dose being given at each of the two, four, and six-month well-child visits, and a fourth booster-type dose at 12 to 15 months of age. If the child misses some shots, they can still finish the vaccination series later, but will miss some of the protection during that infant and toddler's age when they can more easily get the life-threatening type of infection. There are no live bacterial germs in this vaccine. 
It uses purified substances from the walls of the germ's cell to get the body's immune system to make antibodies. Then if your child has someone cough on them or otherwise get exposed to the germ, the body's antibodies will be ready to protect them without the child becoming ill. Now with any vaccine, there is a chance of side effects. Most of the side effects are signs that the body's immune system is beginning to make antibodies. These side effects are usually mild and go away on their own, but serious side effects can rarely occur. Reported problems associated with Prevnar vary by dose and age, but generally about half of children can become drowsy after the shot or have a temporary loss of appetite or mild redness and tenderness where the shot was given. About one out of three had a little swelling where the shot was given. About one out of three had a mild fever. About one in 20 had a higher fever over 102 degrees. Up to about eight out of 10 became a little bit fussy. Life-threatening allergic attacks from the vaccine are very rare. This information on potential side effects was taken from the vaccine information statement that we give you each time your child is vaccinated. These statements, as well as much of the information and images for this video, were taken from the website of the CDC at cdc.gov vaccines. The mission of the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, is to save lives and protect people. Another website with excellent information is that of the Immunization Action Coalition at vaccineinformation.org. Pneumococcal infections can be very serious. Since the introduction of the Prevnar vaccine in the year 2000, we've seen many fewer children with life-threatening pneumococcal infections, both in Modesto and across the U.S. That's good news. I hope that you'll protect your children from this serious infectious disease. Mm -hmm.